What's happening, everybody? It's the Rogue in Disguise, North American community contributor for World of Warships Blitz. And if this is your first time here, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe, and turn that bell to all to catch all that we do for World of Warships Blitz. Oh, but yes. And today we're talking about the Tier 9 British Cruiser, the Plymouth. Oh, but yes. And let's dive right into it. What's happening, everybody, and welcome to the channel. I'm the Rogue in Disguise here. I hope your day is going really well. You guys need to check out the live streams on Facebook because it's really freaking cool stuff because we do play various different types of content, anything from World of Warships, Blues to Call of Duty and Overwatch. But today we're going to be talking about World of Warships, Blues, and the Tier 9 British Cruiser, the Plymouth, which is a premium in this game. So the first thing we want to look at is... The stats, knowing that the ship is built in 1943, has got a displacement of 13,400 tons. Its length is 187 meters. That's 21.5 meters wide, and it has 80,000 horsepower to push it through the waters. But let's talk about the in-game survivability. That's most important. 34,080 hit points. Citadel protection of 10%, fire floating resistance at 12.5%, damage reduction at 7.5%, and torpedo damage reduction at 9%. Max speed is just under 31 knots. Time to full speed is just under 10 seconds. A little get up, a little go. Max traverse speed on the rudder is going to be just under 8 degrees per second, and time to turn is just under 8.5 seconds. Not too bad. Main guns, though, our 152mm L-50 MK-23 is an 4x4 facet. Pretty good number of guns. 7.5 second reload time, though. But you got a distance of 12.24 kilometers. Main battery armor piercing damage is 566 per round. And that's all you got. Yeah, armor piercing damage only. It's like a Fiji. Citadel damage rate of 150%. Tur traverse speed of... 11 degrees. Well, about, about 10 and a half degrees per second. Not too bad. Torpedoes, though, are 533 millimeter. 47 seconds. Almost 48 seconds to reload them. Not too bad. It's actually pretty dang quick. Torpedo range, I wish was always a little bit longer, but it's 7.80 kilometers. Torpedo damage of 3,599 per, per torpedo. Okay, not too bad. Chance of setting a flood is 15%. They do 62.52 knots, which is really fast. Uh, torpedo tube diverse speed is going to be 27.5 degrees per second, so not too bad. Anti-aircraft armament. I, I mean, figure if you guys want to put a little something-something on the aircraft armament, you know, it wouldn't help it. It would help it a little bit, but not too much overall. Maybe like 10% of the lower water. Whatever you guys do, you do that. But the large caliber AE damage is going to be 177 at 3.30 kilometers, small caliber AE damage of 212 at 2.10 kilometers. Surface detection under 9 kilometers at 8.58 kilometers. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. So let's talk about the historical camouflage. Main battery firing range is going to be increased by 4%. Torpedo range is going to be increased by 4%. Max traverse speed is going to be increased by 4%. Surface detection decreased by 4% and XP and silver bonuses are only at 50%. Okay, fair enough. Battle honors. You're going to get two of them. The first one is going to play 10 battles and the second one is seek and destroy where you have to destroy three ships in a single battle. Details of the ships though, I will have to admit it does come with some cool gitchy stuff. You're going to get smoke, hydroacoustic sonar, and two charges of radar. Okay, so it makes the ship a little bit more viable in battle, other than being, you know, a, a, a weird Leander class, I guess. I don't know. You can fire those torpedoes singly. However, you only got a four 
torpedoes in each side. Again, I wish there was a little more, but I guess it offsets it with the fact that you do have radar. Best chances with this ship to get a sunken ship is, well, we're going to have to go after other destroyers and cruisers and take them out. As far as battleships, you don't have any high explosive. Wouldn't even bother with it. And personally, I think the ship is overall an okay ship for what it is. I'm not mad at it, but it is what it is. I do find it though, sometimes it's a little tough to turn unless you put on the equipment to make the turning a little bit better. I do recommend that you put it in the third slot, steering gear modification number two. If you want to do double rudder, that's fine, but I do find that propulsion modification number one makes the time a little easier. I did use aiming system modification number one for my two weapon systems that I have on this base vessel under my control to make the traverse a little bit faster on both of them. I feel that the, without it, it turns okay with the okay as without it, but there's not much, very much options with the otherwise. I like to combine both of them. If you want to go ahead and reduce the dispersion on the vessel, you can. Your turret traverse speed won't be as affected as much, but this is what I did with it. And I feel overall that this build is probably the most practical overall. But if you guys like this video and you want more of this, hit that like button, hit that subscribe, and turn that bell to all to catch future videos like this. Oh, but yes. So until the next time, guys, don't do anything I wouldn't do twice, and check out our live streams on Facebook. Oh, but yes.